Is Rhodes skincare worth the hype or is it just another celebrity skincare cash grab? Well, we are gonna find out in today's video. You guys have been asking, please review Rhodes skincare. We're dying to hear your thoughts on Hailey Bieber's skincare line. I've been trying their products out for quite some time now and I'm really excited to share with you my final thoughts and very strong opinions. The price point on all of these products is $29. Starting with the glazing milk, you get 4.7 ounces. This is a milky hydrating essence. It is intended to be applied as the first step in your skincare routine after cleansing, as a hydrating step to prepare the skin for subsequent skincare products, the theory there being that by improving the moisture content in the top layers of the skin, it's going to enhance penetration of subsequent ingredients. Now, as the other products in this line play out, the idea here is that you're gonna start with the essence and then you're going to layer the peptide glazing fluid and then follow with the barrier cream, which we will get into those in a moment. Beta glucan, which is rich in humectants. It has ceramides, which are an integral component of the skin barrier, and applying them to the skin can help improve skin barrier recovery. This also has zinc gluconate and copper gluconate. Those are salts. Zinc and copper have anti-inflammatory properties. Copper is also uh, necessary for the antioxidant enzyme superoxide dismutase. Whether or not applying it to your skin really leads to better antioxidant capacity, if you will, in the skin. More research is needed, but that is there. But importantly, these salts uh, of gluconolactone, gluconolactone is a polyhydroxy acid, which is very hydrating, helps improve the moisture content of the top layers of the skin, and also helps with very gently exfoliating the skin without being irritating or harsh. I have videos, as a side note, all about the benefits of polyhydroxy acids in skincare products. So the purpose of this essence is to hydrate and to prepare the skin for subsequent steps in your skincare routine. Now, you absolutely do not need an essence. You may want to incorporate one one just for additional moisturizing properties. Essence is also useful, I find, as a first step in your morning skincare routine if you just want a little bit of moisturizer on board but you don't want something heavy. And then you're gonna come on over that with your sunscreen. Essence absorbs into the skin very quickly. It doesn't leave a greasy film on the skin, so putting sunscreen on over is very compatible in that regard. You don't get pilling, uh, and the sunscreen doesn't typically have any issues setting up. And that was the case for me using this product. Now, one thing I was surprised by about this and actually really liked is that in contrast to many other essences, toners, liquid products, when you dispense the product and apply it to the skin, it has more staying powder. It doesn't just quickly run down the side of your cheek. It grips. So I find that it's easier, in a sense, to apply in comparison to many other liquid-based products. Now, I have reviewed many essences and toners over the years, milky ones, hydrating ones, ones with active ingredients, and I would say this is a pretty good essence. I genuinely enjoyed using this product. Is it necessary? Is it essential? No. If you're someone who likes a hydrating essence, you may enjoy this. I really appreciate that texture that this has in terms of its ability to spread on the skin nicely without just running off the side of your face and being all drippy. It's a lot easier to apply. I think products like this are a really good option if you shave in the morning, um, but you don't want to do some complicated skincare routine. Using something like this as an aftershave is a really great option because it helps with barrier recovery, the ceramides, the hydrating properties, but it's not greasy or heavy, and therefore your sunscreen will go on over it very easily. The peptide glazing fluid, you get 1.7 ounces. This product is intended to go on after the glazing milk, should you choose to use them together. If you don't, I would suggest applying this maybe as a first step in your skincare routine immediately after cleansing to, in theory, enhance penetration of the ingredients in this. This has niacinamide, which is a B vitamin that is an antioxidant, is anti-inflammatory, helps calm down redness, and it's also useful for improving hyperpigmentation or at least supporting the clearance of hyperpigmentation. Niacinamide is also anti-inflammatory and may help in reducing oxidation of sebum. This is marketed as a peptide glazing fluid. Now, the whole marketing around this brand is all about having this look of a glazed donut before you go to bed. But what is the actual peptide in this? Acetyl heptapeptide 8. Does that sound familiar to you? That is the peptide that is argireline. Now, if you remember back to my videos on Botox in a bottle, argireline is a peptide that has been in the industry for quite some time. And its claim to fame is that it acts like Botox in a bottle. It claims to 
act just where Botox acts at the neuromuscular junction to relax the muscles and smooth out wrinkles. But what are the odds that that actually happens? Research suggests that the penetration of this ingredient into the skin is limited to the top layers of the skin, making it incredibly unlikely that it gets to the side of action of Botox. It does have a track record of improving the appearance of wrinkles, but whether or not that has anything to do with the peptide actually getting in and doing the biologic things it allegedly does, uh, you gotta take that with a big grain of salt. I really think that for the most part, this particular ingredient helps improve the moisture content in the top layers of the skin, plumps up the skin cells, and that has a wrinkle smoothing effect. And in fact, the research supports that. Um, there are studies with argireline that show an improvement in water content in the skin using this peptide. In addition, to to argireline. This also has marula oil, an emollient that has, in theory, a lot of antioxidants that, in theory, may help your skin in recovering from environmental stressors that you cope with throughout the day. And remember, as you sleep at night, your skin is still repairing some of that stressful damage. And so having antioxidants on board in a moisturizing product such as this before you go to bed looking like a glazed donut may, in fact, be helpful to you. Emollients in moisturizing products such as this also help smooth and soften the skin surface. If you have flaky skin emollients help slip in between those flaky skin mounds and allow them to shed uh, without disrupting the skin barrier. This also has hyaluronic acid, humectant, that likewise can help improve moisture retention in the top layers of the skin, smoothing out wrinkles and fine lines. So my experience using this product is the consistency of a very lightweight moisturizer. It builds itself as a fluid, but it's not a true liquid. It has more grip to it than a liquid, a fluid. It is more of a lightweight gel-like consistency. I've really enjoyed using this product. I've had no issues with it. I do think it's very moisturizing. I've layered it over the glazing milk and I really like that combination. It's very soothing, hydrating, and you do see the skin appear a lot plumper and smoother and that helps diminish the appearance of fine lines ever so subtly as well as helps with diminishing the appearance of pores. And I like the way this layers on over the milk or I've also used it by itself without the glazing milk and it too is nice and hydrating. The two together, I think, you know, they have supporting roles in terms of the ingredient family. So layering them on top of one another works out well, but you certainly could get improvement uh, using one or the other. <laughs> Moving on to the third product, which is going to be layered on over these two, should you choose to use all three, or it would be, I guess, the final step in your skincare routine before you go to bed at night. That is their Barrier Restore Cream. Now, Barrier Restore Cream, I was thinking to myself, oh, is this gonna be a barrier cream that is often used in a spot-focused manner for areas where you have a lot of irritation going on? Check out my video on how to use a barrier cream. I talk all about the benefits of barrier creams, when to use them, for example, under the arms to cut down on chafing. So I was kind of thinking in my mind, that's what this was going to be like. It's not. It is a thicker moisturizing cream. So where does the term barrier come in? Then? Well, the peptides in this product allegedly help with repairing the skin barrier. So this has a subtle tetrapeptide 2, which allegedly is a stimulator of collagen and elastin production. So that may, in theory, if the peptide actually gets into your skin and elicits these biologic pathways, in theory, it may help improve collagen and elastin in the skin, smoothing out wrinkles and improving snap elasticity, giving you more youthful radiant glow. Palmitoyl heptapeptide 27. Now this is a lipoprotein. Allegedly, this peptide boosts the production of filaggrin and loracrin, which are components of the skin barrier. And so ultimately that may help with barrier recovery, but you know, take it with a grain of salt. Although the site of action is up top as opposed to requiring the peptide to get down into the skin to act in a deeper layer. So maybe, you know, it's plausible that it could work to help improve filaggrin and loracrin. Then this has palmitoyl oligopeptide 78, which allegedly stimulates keratin. In theory, this could help improve barrier function, epidermal thickness. Then this has palmitoyl octopeptide 24, which allegedly is going to have an inhibitor effect on the enzyme tyrosinase, which is responsible for pigment production. So it may help with just improving overall skin radiance, glow, and maybe in theory helping to lighten or reduce dark spots, although 
although the maker of this peptide does not really make that sort of claim. This product also has shea butter, which is nice for reducing water loss. It has squalane and emollient that can soften and smooth rough, dry skin texture, slip between shedding cornea sites to help them desquamate more efficiently. And this has sodium hyaluronate, hyaluronic acid, which along with the peptides can help improve the moisture content of the top layers of the skin and ultimately that does have a wrinkle smoothing effect. Now, in my opinion, the Barrier Restore Cream is a very nice product, but I have to tell you, I did run into issues if I tried to use this as my morning facial moisturizer prior to applying sunscreen. The other two products I could use in the morning before sunscreen, no issue with pilling, but if I added this, and then sunscreen, I would get pilling, which is not surprising. When it comes to your sunscreen, uh, you really don't wanna be layering it on over a ton of stuff because it can have issues setting up properly and that's where you can run into pilling. I have a recent short as a side note here on YouTube about why your sunscreen pills, P-I-L-L, -L, just like an old sweater pilling, that can happen with your sunscreen. So check that out if you are coping with that because it's very frustrating when that happens. And it does happen if you try and layer it on over this Barrier Restore Cream. So I would reserve the Barrier Restore Cream for your nighttime skincare routine as a PM moisturizer. It is actually quite good. It's not heavy, it's not greasy. And if you wanted to do the whole three steps, essence, glazing fluid, and then Barrier Repair Cream, the three layer on top of one another quite nicely. Speaking of nighttime skincare, skincare routine, you all know I use tretinoin and I put tretinoin on following the Barrier Restore Cream because while it is a moisturizing cream, it's not like a true barrier cream like a diaper rash cream or petroleum jelly. Therefore, tretinoin still goes in just fine. So those are the three products, the ingredients, what the ingredients may offer you, my experience using the products. Genuinely, I have enjoyed all three of these. I will continue to use them until I have finished them, but the one that I say is probably the most stand out to me is actually the milk, the glazing milk. When I use these products, my skin looks moisturized, smooth, clear, radiant, and glowy. They're good moisturizing products. Are they mind blowing? Are they offering something unique that you could only get from Hailey Bieber? Absolutely not. I have lots of reviews on this channel regarding different moisturizers, moisturizing products from drugstore, Korean brands, Japanese skincare brands. You will find products very similar to this elsewhere. You're not necessarily missing out if you don't buy these. But if you are interested in these, they're not bad. They're actually pretty good in my opinion, in my experience using them. Judge for yourself if the ingredients are something that you think are worthwhile in your routine. And let's talk about the price, $29 for each of these. That's steep, but you know, I was looking online, you know, four or five years ago, I would have, my jaw would have dropped saying $29 for 1.7 ounces of moisturizer. But truthfully, if you go in the drugstore these days, drugstore brands are starting to charge around $22 for roughly that same amount. Drugstore brands are starting to charge around $20, $22 for 1.7 ounce jar of moisturizer from the drugstore. Good reputable drugstore brands are starting to creep up there with inflation. $29, I think, you know, is not actually that outrageous. There are a lot of brands in Target that are that expensive, if not more expensive. So I don't actually think the price is too bad. Um, you know, there are definitely less expensive options out there if you are on a budget that are equally as good, some better. So these prices are not too exorbitant uh, for, for what they are. And they're well formulated, in my opinion. The, the products are nice, they're a nice consistency. They work well together. They're hydrating. They do what they, they market themselves as doing. Um, and, and they're not making any outlandish claims, problematic claims. They're not saying anything bizarre. You probably are paying a bit more for the celebrity branding. And here's the thing, when it comes to celebrity skincare, this is always the question, is celebrity skincare worth it? Is it any good? Is it just a cash grab for them? You should look at any skincare brand with that same lens though. Like is another skincare brand coming out? Is it just a cash grab? Because the skincare industry is pretty lucrative and uh, you know anyone can start a skincare brand. And I think 
celebrities will get a lot of criticism for starting a skincare brand because it is known to be lucrative, but other people who start skincare brands that you don't know about, they don't get the same kind of criticism because there's not a face to associate with them. And therefore, I, you know, it's not necessarily fair to assume that a celebrity skincare brand is a cash grab. That being said, in many cases, when a celebrity launches a skincare brand, there's all this hype around it and then you know, it sort of loses steam and the celebrity never talks about it again. This brand, it's been around now for what? Over a year, will it stay? I honestly don't think so. I really don't know that how much staying power this has. The products aren't bad, but I do think when a celebrity is attached to a brand, and they are the face of the brand, like you go on the website and you see her face, I do think it can hurt the brand in the long run, ultimately in terms of its longevity. Other celebrity brands where the celebrity is not the face of the brand, but they are known to be associated with the brand, I think they have better longevity in the market. But people always point the finger at celebrities and say they have no business creating a skincare line, but do dermatologists really have any business creating a skincare line? There's nothing in our training that teaches us about how to formulate skincare products. Yes, we treat skin diseases, but skincare products are not intended to treat skin diseases. They have supporting roles in skin care of people who do have skin conditions and knowing about the ingredients that can support the skin needs of people with different skin conditions. Yes, that's part of being a dermatologist, but by and large, there's nothing per se about being a dermatologist that really makes one qualified to create a skincare line. The general public has this assumption that the, a dermatologist is the person to be creating a skincare line. But a really good skincare brand is going to be contingent on the team, who all is involved in the brand. If the celebrity is the face of the brand, but they have a really good team behind them, then the products can be actually quite good. And in my opinion, I think that might be the case here. And you know, on the flip side, you could have a dermatologist who just quickly puts together a skincare brand, especially if it's a well-known dermatologist who already has a face that's recognizable to people and people trust, that brand is going to sell very quickly and the products might not actually be that good. Uh, there's nothing about being a dermatologist that guarantees that the products that you choose are going to be good. So use your best judgment. Hopefully this review of these products helps you out for those of you who are interested. Now you may be wondering, what about the lip treatment? What about the lip treatment? I reviewed that already. So if you wanna see my review on the Rode lip treatment, I'm gonna link it on the end slate. You can watch that video next. But if you like this one, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye.